Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and great esteem goes to our Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Thank y'all for tuning in, brothers and sisters, to yet the fourth installment of this conversation about the serpent marriage. Now, as in the other videos, I wanted to remind y'all that this is just a conversation between brews as if I was sitting right there with a cup of tea or something in front of you and we just discussing this topic. And uh, this is a topic we needed to discuss, we need to bring out so I can get some of your thoughts and your ideas and um, some more information. But the father woke me up at 5 a.m. some nights ago. <clears throat> And he was discussing this with me because I need to have an understanding. So he had me look at the Adamic marriage, which is for all the sons of Adam. And then he had me look at the Yashorite marriage, which is set apart. And there's more rules added to that, which is specifically for Yashara, the, the house of Yashara. And y'all. If you do not know what the House of Yashua is, watch my House of Yashua series where, we, where I discuss the House of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Twelve Sons, and Yahusha and Yahuwah's House. Go watch that series to get a fuller understanding of what the House of Yashua is, and that Yashua is the head of those, the, 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 uh, those houses, which included Gentiles. Gentiles, servants, handmaids, whether they were, they came in freely or whether we brought them or whether we traded for them. So you have to have a full understanding of the house of Yashara to understand what's for Yashara and what's uh, for the other nations. So let's start with Adam. Adam and Eve came together in the beginning matter of fact the most high made eve as a help me right from the start that was his wife right from the start there was no okay i'm gonna test y'all two together and see if y'all gonna match up and no there was none of that she was made for him to be a help me to be joined onto him in perpetual marriage adam and eve were made together from the start well, of course, Adam was first. Then the father saw that he needed a help me. And then he made Eve out of Adam. You all see what I'm saying? So all the sons of Adam and Eve share in one thing. That one thing is they all will be joined to one another in marriage. That's the way it was supposed to be from the very beginning. Of course, sin came in and brought in adultery and fornication and all type of other stuff. But that's the basic universal rule for all the sons of Adam. Whether you're wicked or whether you're righteous. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if you're wicked or righteous. That's the basic rule. Now, there are basic <clears throat> things that... Uh, all of Adam has to suffer because of the sin in the garden. Number one, Adam had to suffer that death and also to, to work by the sweat of his hand for, for his food. Then the woman, she has her pa birth pains and the husband was to uh, rule over her. That's basic stuff that took place in the garden for all of Adam. Whether you're righteous or whether you're wicked. These two things exist. Whether you're with a Yahshua like following the law of such commandments. Or whether you're with a Gentile who's not. Those two basic rules apply to all the sons of Adam. Now here's where things change and get different. When the father took out a people for himself. When he married Yahshua made her his wife brought her with money he took her out and he's buying her um, back 
through Yahusha, who paid the price for our sins. So 30 pieces of silver, he's, brought, he's buying his bride back to himself. Just as every man who takes a woman of Yasharal, uh, they have to go to the father and her father and give him the dowry's price for, for her hand. Give him money for her hand and then give gifts to the family. So this, the father doesn't step outside of his rules. It's us who steps outside of his rules. So the same rules uh, that he wrote in those scriptures apply to Yasharal and all the grafted into Yasharal, not to the whole world. Y'all understand? Though uh, all the other nations are a spittle to him, it's only the individuals that join themselves unto the Father through the Son. And those individuals are with us. The Father's prepared some of them as our inheritance, as he gave them to us. Just as he took us as an inheritance. These special rules apply to Yasharal and the grafted in only, brothers and sisters. So when you're reading in that book, and you come across stuff like um, that seem contradictory, like uh, Ruth the Moabite marrying into Yasharal. And you look at the scriptures that tell us not to marry a Moabite, not to give our sons and daughters to them, and vice versa, right? But there was, there was something different. Something else took place. Faith. The faith that was given to Ruth. And the result of that faith was her acceptance by the Most High as being clean. She was no longer unclean. She was clean, and to be treated as one born in the land. And though, she, and even though she married a Hebrew at first, he he died, and then she she came back with Naomi when she could have went back to her land with her people, her culture, her heritage, and all the deed, all the so-called mighty ones that they worship over there, all that pagan worship. She chose not to do that because she knew who Naomi was, and who Yahusha, I mean Yahweh was. So she went back with them and she was accepted by them when they judged in righteousness and she was given to Boaz eventually and the result of that was King David. So there's faith at play throughout the scriptures that could graft uh, someone in that you may deem not graftable Y'all understand? Those rules apply to the wicked. You not to take an unclean Moabite or unclean Midianite, right? We got punished for that. 20,000 of us died for taking those Moabite and Midianite wives. Why? Because the father saw that they were unclean. Unclean at heart. Y'all see that? Because we became his when we went to that that mountain. The mountain was smoking and the blood was spilled and sprinkled on the books and the people as a blood covenant. And the same thing happens between a man and a woman when they first come together. That's the binding of the covenant. When you enter into that woman and the hymen is broken and the blood is released, that's a blood covenant. That's a blood covenant. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Virgins coming together. Binding it in blood. For life. But when you're outside of that. You're, you're outside of the most high. But it but it does still uh, mean that you married. There is that same basic atomic rule. For all people in the world. Including Yashara. But there's more added for us. Because we are his inheritance. We are supposed to be righteous and clean. And he doesn't want us to touch the unclean thing. And so when we did touch the unclean thing. Punishment came. So. Uh, the, the most high didn't recognize those marriages. And he said put them away. Give them a divorce. Because he had power to end that marriage. Just as. 
Abraham had power to end Ishmael's marriage when he went to that to Ishmael to see Ishmael and he went to that tent and that evil woman was cursing and yelling at her children beating them and treated him ill and he he told her to, to give Ishmael this message put away the nail of this tent for it is for it is bad guess what he canceled that marriage as the father and then he came back later on and saw that there was another wife there and she was good and he gave the message tell Ishmael to keep this this nail for it is good and Ishmael came back home rejoiced in that news and he packed up his stuff and went and seen his father y'all see that story there the father told canceled that marriage the father can cancel our marriages if he so choose if he sees you with the unclean thing and he's cleaning you up he don't want you to be defiled this is what Paul was also talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 uh, if you marry an unclean thing you have to put that thing away now if the person is an unbeliever that accepts you that your children may be set apart he he says stay stay with them but that don't mean that they're going to be eating pork chops and everything and waxing worse and worse in your household matter of fact they're going to be drawing more toward the most high and he's going to protect the sanctity of that particular marriage and build it up if that Gentile man that you may have married or that Gentile woman you married accepts accepts what you're doing and doesn't hinder it and doesn't uh, bring in all heresy and everything it may be that later on that that person may go full into it with you so you do have that factor there but it's the father's choice whether he's going to look into the heart and mind of the souls of that man and that woman and see a clean, a, a clean thing or an unclean thing. Only he knows, brothers and sisters. You have to give him that choice. So I'm recommending that each one of you who stood in those serpent temples and got married recognize that you need to redo it underneath Yahusha Hamashiach. I mean, through Yahusha Hamashiach in the name of the Most High Yahweh. That's what I'm recommending all of you do. If the other partner accepts it, if the partner doesn't accept it, you bring it to the Most High. He'll tell you, he'll let you know in your heart if they, to put away this nail in that tent or to keep it. That's his choice, not yours anymore. But you at least try that first thing and see if you can save the marriage. Okay? Try it first. If, they, if it can't be done, and if you as the head can't rule in righteousness over your house, and, and, and the wife is, is going to just be a problem, the father may tell you to put, go ahead and put her away. She's not going to walk in his ways no matter what you tell her. Especially if you ask her to redo the marriage. She may not do it. And you're going to have to pray to Father. And let him lead and guide you. And let him say put away the nail in this tent. Or keep that nail. For I will cleanse that nail. And reposition it. You have to give him those choices and options. And not let anybody tell you what to. Uh, go ahead and get divorced. No. It has to be the father telling you to put away the nail in that tent. He would not want you to be under bondage, brothers and sisters. And I'm just going to recap and just uh, recap everything and sum it up all over again, brothers and sisters. So you can end this video now or you can continue to listen. Now, before we recap, I just want to mention that the father does not recognize those serpent marriages that you did at the altars of the serpent pastors and preachers or any other 
um, organization, religion that you went before or even out in a field where you're invoking names of nature and all these other things, uh, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't recognize your idol worship, okay, brothers and sisters? So whatever took place in there was a ritual between you and those entities, but the real marriage is when you binded yourself when you went into that woman there was a contract made between both of you a binding a bond that was the bond of the covenant of marriage beginning that's what he recognized so you're either in fornication or adultery depending on um <clears throat> depending on your mind and your heart but that's the basis of the universal atomic marriage that was uh, initiated when uh, the father created Eve out of Adam to be his helpmate. And so his children will bind themselves. They will leave their father and mother and then bind themselves in a perpetual covenant, blood covenant with woman so uh, the men will bind themselves to the woman in a perpetual covenant of marriage and that's for the righteous and the unrighteous and and again <clears throat> the rules change when it when it's dealing with Yashara so with Yashara since we're Kodesh since we are set apart and belong to the Most High, brought by him uh, there's uh, a, a different rule that applies to us like is that person clean you fist to lay with you fist to bind a blood a blood covenant with is that person clean because you're mine and you're clean you will not lay down with the unclean thing touch not the unclean thing so each and each and every time we went outside of that which I gave examples in the other videos and I'll give a few more here uh, each and every time we did that the father canceled those contracts he canceled them y'all understand by his right and his power because we belong to him we don't have the right to just go out and do what we want to do we have to do as he say because we are his he's the head he rules over the wife he leads and guides the wife he teaches the wife that's why it says in scriptures that every man should teach his wife at home. You understand? Because the father teaches his wife. He teaches Yashara his ways, his Kodesh ways. And he has an order. And when we're outside of those orders, everything breaks down and falls apart. So, brothers and sisters, you got any questions or comments or scriptures you want to add? Please put them in the description box below. I will prepare a full marriage video concerning this topic that we've been discussing and all of its aspects. And we're going to read scriptures. Uh, to This time it was just conversation with, with the brews. Like every now and then I do. I'll have a conversation about a topic. Sometimes I'll bring in scripture while con conversating. But uh, I want y'all to turn to the Father in Shamayin above and pray to him about your significant other, whether they are a believer or an unbeliever, whether they're half in it and half uh, with the Father. Pray to him about because he knows what's best. He will search the mind and heart of whoever you with, the husband or the wife. And he would deem them either unclean or unfit. And he will put them away for you. One of two ways. He'll put them away. He'll ask you to separate yourself from them. Or he'll, he'll let their own wickedness turn upon their own head. As he did with uh, King David and Abigail. And the story of that is uh, Nahor who was wicked. Refused to feed King David and his men. After King David and his men watched his cattle. And his 
property. So King David was coming to kill all of them. And Abigail heard of it and she killed the fatted calf and she baked some bread and everything and prepared him a meal and that appeased King David. She she being the righteous, clean woman. Nahor heard of what King David was fencing to do and he had a heart attack and he died a few days later. Therefore setting her free to marry. When King David heard that Abigail what happened to her husband he came and got her and married her so yes when it's dealing with two Hebrews uh, it's a little bit different whether they are unbelieve or not whether they're your enemy or not we got some different rules that apply to Yasharal those who are within our camps and our walls and our borders it's a little different than the other nations the other nations are a spittle to him let them do what they do. But we got special rules that we have to follow within our 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 our, our homes, our borders. So the same rules that apply to us don't apply to the whole world, brothers and sisters, just as much as uh when Hamashad said, I pray for those whom you gave gave me. I pray not for the whole world. I he wasn't praying for the whole world. He was praying for those that gave him. That's the ones that matter. Those precious, righteous saints that are in him. Uh, Kodeshim that's in him. That's what the Father is going to look down and look through Hamashiach and see those clean ones. He's not going to see you all filled with sin no more. He's going to see you as clean. But if you marry yourself to an unclean thing, you're going to be tied to a tear tied to a serpent and he's come to cut off those things like Abraham cut off Ishmael's first wife and put away that unclean thing just as uh, I think it was Reuben and Issachar who had Canaanite wives at first and then they put them away obeying the commandment and um, they went and got some um, wives for of of our people, of um, Abraham's people. Y'all see that? And they took them as virgins, of course, and taught them the ways of the Most High, of course. But look what happened to Judah. Judah married a Canaanite woman and look what happened to those two sons. They got put to death for wickedness. And then, of course, he got a seed through Tamar when Tamar tricked him into lying with him. And uh, providing a seed to carry on the Judah line, right? But that's the way the father looks at it for us. Whether you are clean or unclean, suitable to enter into this bond covenant with the Father in Shamayin above, brothers and sisters. So I'm glad we had this conversation. I'm glad y'all put your comments in the other videos. Uh, it helped me understand the fullness uh, of the marriage. It helped me separate the Adamic marriage from the Yashualite marriage and the father really put it together when he woke me up at 5 a.m. to discuss it with me and to share the you know share this information with all of you so a fuller lesson will be brought out later on in the future when my purge is complete and I'm really purging out brothers and sisters I'm at the final stage of my purge out, which I had to go through a test, a special test in trial and tribulation. Uh, dealing with that video that I put out. When I was asking them, well, I was asking them your thoughts on this dream I had. And that dream was preparing me for the test. And I didn't know it, but it came. And, and, uh. The father said he would be with me through this test and trial and keep me in the 
in the waters of love, truth, and faith, and understanding, and forgiveness, and mercy, and salvation, and grace. And uh, I got to finish going through this final part of the test, which I'm uh, ref- being refined, brothers and sisters. And I believe after that, the Father may release me to to come back and to go full time. So thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for your prayers. Thank y'all for any help that you ever given me, whether it was financial help, whether it was a kind word, whether it was lifting me up in prayer, or whether it was you sending me some material through email, and, and, and for you sticking with me all this time. Thank y'all, because these are the things we need from one another in these last days, brothers and sisters. We need to stand together, stick together, long suffer with one another through our trials, tribulations, through our sins, as we're being corrected by the Most High. We all need support some way, somehow. So uh, it's okay to drop me a line or two every now and then to see how I am and uh, it's, it's okay to drop me a prayer through email or something uh, or whatever whatever the most I lead you to do thank y'all so much with that I'm going to say shalom see y'all in the next upload video <laughs>